Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, can I hide the display taweez is in my home by white paper because of others who don't want? Sure, whatever you have to do, no problem. You can put just the taweez upon yourself and the one for your room, if it's, if it's not your home then you can put that taweez in a drawer in, in the room. So yes, and whatever is necessary to do, it emits a light and alhamdulillah so that that light is, is emanating wherever that taweez and whatever the intention. Everything is an intention to Allah that, Ya Rabbi I'm intending to put these, I am a weak servant asking for your, your power, your support and taking a path of humility. And then Allah is the one whom is the protector. So it's merely an action. When Allah said, take one step, everything in our life is one step. So if we understand that, that's, that's what's the most important. So anyone wants to say, oh, oh how's this and Allah is the one who protects. Yes, but Allah said, take one step and I will come 99 steps to you. Doesn't mean you stand there and say, okay, now come. So everything in our life is one step, you know, I can't do the orat complete, I can't do it 100%, I can't do it like this, I, well, you, you weren't going to lift yourself up anyways. Everything is your one step. I do this orat knowing I'm weak Ya Rabbi, this is my one step but please Ya Rabbi come to me with your 99 steps. I give this little amount, I'm not going to conquer the earth with it but this is my one step. And that's why this path is based on humility. The one whom doesn't step and they come back and say, why you're like Sitna Maryam, you're just going to sit and hope everything comes to your lap. That's not the, the situation, that's not the, not the, what's the, uh, the word called? It's not the rule because there are exceptional people in which Allah just sends them miraculously. But the rule of humanity is to take a step towards humility. Say everything is based within that understanding of Allah saying, take one step and I come 99 steps to you. So everything that we're doing is dalil and it's Islamic law is that one step. So if people understand that, say, oh why do you… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You have to wear taweez if Allah is protecting you uh, because this is one step. I put the taweez symbolic of my weakness. And that's what Allah wanted Sayyidina Musa to do. Tell your people, mark their doors with this blood from this animal that I told you to sacrifice. Why? Because he knows his people are arrogant people. They drove him crazy for 40 years not listening. And Allah knew that they're not going to do it, they're not going to believe. But in reality, did the angel need to see that? The angel doesn't know who, who's to be protected, not to be protected. They don't have like their own divine radar, they need to actually see a blood mark on a door. And what they call the misbah now, they keep it still. No. But Allah wanted to show humility that whom is humble from your people, if they take this action because it's not for them to say why, they just samina wa ta'ana, they hear they do it. But the haqqaiq behind it is Allah wants to see if people are humble. If they say, no, no, why, why I have to do Allah wills protect me, mm, nope. And the angels didn't protect them and they were taken down and smited. 
So it means this still at every step in our life is one step. So that when we take our one step in life, Allah provides the 99th step. That's when we do awrad for shifa. Same understanding, you do the awrad as your one step, Allah grants the healing. So everything is a path of humility, Ya Rabbi ana abdukil aji sutaif wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahan. That I give this sadaqah, I give this charity, I give this action, I give this water, I take this awrah, do this uh, etiquette, all of this Ya Rabbi but I'm weak servant, this is my one step, please come to me with your support and, and your resolution of a difficulty or blessing or whatever is it that we're asking for inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, I bought the Taweez and I've noticed changes in my life. I definitely feel more protection than before. Thank you. Thank you. Allah bless you and alhamdulillah that's the one step and Allah inshaAllah bless all humble people and those whom submitting their self to His Divine the grace and Divine the blessings. Tariqah is a school of e immense humility training. So when people say, why you need that, why you need a staff, why you need a tasbih, why not need it? Our whole life is about showing that we are keeping ourselves low to the ground, fly low and avoid the radar in life. Just be humble, let Allah to be the protector, let Allah to be the healer, let Allah to be the provider that we take one step with humility and that Allah to dress us and to bless us inshaAllah, always. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Can the shayateen eliminate or weaken the taweez's effect? No. Can the shaitan do anything against Allah <coughs> Absolutely not. But the shaitan can affect you, right? The ta'weez is, is, is not something that can be reduced because you're talking about Allah, shaitan and you in the middle. When you take a path of humility, the ta'weez have put the ta'weez from the barakah of awliyaullah as a sign of my belief and again understanding, reiterating, is my one step that, Ya Rabbi I showed to you my humbleness. I have no power, Ya Rabbi you are my protector. So then that's now my faith with Allah Where shaitan is in the middle of this? If the person's faith is in Allah Allah is the protector. But what shaitan can do is keep whispering that to you. Maybe the tawi is not working. What do you mean tawi is not working? It's a piece of paper, how it's not supposed to work. Maybe the tawi uh, didn't come to you completely the right way, didn't mail to you. Oh, these are the waswases of shaitan. Until what? You now have a shack. You have a shack, you have a doubt, oh, take the tawi's off. So then you can see how you then step back from your one step and then that whole one step you were doubting and shaking the whole time. So that's not… that's… that's between shaitan and your faith. The rest is based on… on faith. When I believe, my belief is in Allah and my path is one step in humility. For you think if you wear that and Allah wants to punish you, it's going to protect you? No, because Allah gives ayat in Qur'an, don't take awliya as your protectors. Means don't go to anyone thinking they can protect you against Allah That That's a charlatan, that's how you have problems, don't worry, I will resolve them, send me money. No, there's nobody going to resolve any problems if Allah is angry with you. There's no necklace you can wear, there's no, nothing you can do to protect yourself from Allah so that's 100%, 200% guaranteed. This is different. This is a path of ishq and love and muhabbat 
that if Allah guided you to this path of guidance then Allah is asking you to learn guidance. So I take a path in one step of being humble and asking Allah's protection. Ya Rabbi that I'm nothing, I believe in these awliya, I believe in Prophet's love and count me in as a humble servant, my protection from Allah And my whole life is then shaitan whispering in my ear that, don't do it, don't give that support, don't do the maulid, don't do your salah right now, don't… that's shaitan's job to continuously whisper in one ear. <coughs> our job is to struggle and fight for our faith and to keep our faith. So there is nobody who can protect us from Allah So our job is to seek refuge in Allah Not that Allah be angry with us and we look for ta'weez to protect ourselves from Allah It's impossible, there's nothing, nothing like unto that except shaitans and charlatans. That's why those verses of Qur'an are made in reference to those. Don't seek people who think they're going to help you from Allah If Allah is not going to send you, nobody can send you. If Allah is not going to protect you, nobody can protect you. This is about Allah loving you, guiding you and want now to show you how to fight shaitan and to have yaqeen and perfection of faith inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as If the taweez gets worn due to overuse and some letters are erased off, should we replace it? Please forgive my ignorance. Sure, again that has to be with one step. The night's theme I guess is one step. <clears throat> when, you, when you have something <clears throat> you keep a ihtiram. When you have something you keep a respect for it, that's one step. Our life was for example the beatific sunnah, if my love is that I'm following the most blessed king of all creation then his holy sunnah is something magnificently important in my life. So then I make sure my suits are tailor-made because everyone goes and makes a nice suit for a wedding, a, a business party, real estate uh, secret circles they have of these big real estate people, they, they're in the million club market, they, they all have special suits and when you have the sunnah this is the most special circle that you can have been created for. You don't think that you should have a nice sharp beatific suit as a sign of your belief. That's why then you uphold it with, this is the greatest honour Allah has given to me. If I can't afford a suit then I'm going to make sure I have the most beatific kufi and that I have my beatific ring and that if I have my hoofs they're clean. Means anything that I'm doing in the way, in the love of Prophet I want it to be the best, the cleanest, the most perfected and that shows my faith. We described before you invite people over for the love of Allah but you feed them in a disrespectful way as if they're like cattle. Here you know how you feed cattle, they, they come and you put a trough and you say, put your thing in there, who cares, get your food, get out of here. There's no death dharam, there's no respect. You respect the guest because these are guests of Allah because we respect Allah if the people are not respectful or no, that's not our problem. Our problem is that we love Allah and these are guests from Allah Our responsibility is to host them to the best that we can so that we show the perfection of our own faith. This is not for anyone else, this is for myself. When I have the love for Prophet it's going to be taken care of. You can do it the reverse. Anyone wants to come against their dunya desire, don't buy any more new suits for your dunya and just buy your new sunnah suits for your prayers. But no, you wear your raggedy suits for, for sunnah, they're dilapidated, maybe 20 years old with holes in them. But for work mashaAllah you have like the best uniforms, best suits, best uh, everything because you want promotion, jobs and money. That shows you dunya. So everything around us shows dunya desires. 
But for dunya hasanat wa akhirah hasanat then you can wear nice clothes for work but you better have the same nice clothes for your prayers and for the sunnah of Prophet If you have both then you're a balanced person. Otherwise go to your wardrobe tonight and look and say, well how come all my dunya stuff are so beautiful and my akhirah stuff are like, huh, so something's wrong. You don't see being Allah sees that too? But when you're balanced they're all beautific. That's why when you have the mawlids make it beautiful, make the events to be beautiful. When you host things make it to be beautiful, tashrif, you put it with the respect not, not for the people they are the guest of Allah it's for Allah Look when Allah wanted to honour Prophet he sent him a limousine, he sent him a buraq. He sent him the archangels, not small angels, he sent him the highest level of angels. He sent him water to even bathe him. So next time you want to have a guest you bring special water just to bathe them. Prophet Allah is showing us manners, the, look how I respected my, the, my most beloved Prophet. I sent him buraq, I sent him angels, I sent him juppas and khirkas and clothes from paradise, water from paradise to bathe and to wash to perfume and musk and fragrance himself Allah shows us how to have manners for that which you love. So yes, if your taweez is dilapidated what does it cost you to get a new taweez? Out of respect to keep everything always honourable, everything very beautific and very fragrant and everything to be top of the notch, top line so that when people see you they understand the amount of respect you have for your belief. You go to places and people say, oh you people look very royal, all sort of beautific uh, clothings and outfits and fragrances. Yes, because we represent the heavenly kingdom and uh, we have an immense admiration and love and respect for that kingdom inshaAllah. And it shows in what we do not what we say. Don't say, don't do as I say but do as I do inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is there a way to make up for failing and making mistakes on your path? Yes, give sadaqah, zakat, mawlid, water wells, food to the orphanages that make up your hasanat to be very strong. Everybody is going to have sins and, and wrongdoings. That's the regulator, remember that's the talks what we say shaitan has to bring the charge down. You can counter it and Allah made it very easy because that's only one down and every good action is ten up. So it's very easy. Before the night ends make sure your account is up, count how many sins you had and say, so, okay now I gotta get it up fifty. So you do five hasanats and it goes up ten, each hasanat is ten. So definitely it's very easy, do good deeds so that your account is up, make your salawats your account is up and uh, all the voluntary, your salah doesn't bring it up. The salah has to be done, that's mandatory. So the countering of negative actions and sins then must go into the category of voluntary worshipness. That you pray extra sunnahs, you do your salawats, you do extraordinary activities to bring your hisab and your accounts up inshaAllah. You can't get credit for your fired prayer, your, you prayed Isha, you had to do it. Imagine the sins of not doing that Isha prayer. So then you have to do extraordinary and voluntary acts of worshipness to bring your hasanat and good deeds, the account of good deeds up higher than what the sins for that day were inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can we keep our children uh, in this month of Safar? You do your good deeds and that your good deeds to shelter them. So the <coughs> actions of the parents, if the children are small then their actions are like an umbrella that shelter the children inshaAllah. Make a well in their name, do good deeds in their name, give out food in their name, all, all these actions, make your zikrs every day, give the ida, and name their names in the ida, and make all of these different actions so that they become an umbrella of protection for the family. Mawlana Shaykh Adnan 
about the Salah Siru described also make sure that you mention throughout the month, Mawlana Abu Ahmad al-Sughuri about the Salah Siru that to be a protector from any difficulties in the month of Safar. That recite Fatiha, give water and ask for the madad and support of Abu Ahmad al-Sughuri, Mawlana Sultanul Awliya Abu Ahmad al-Sughuri but the Sallallahu Siru from our Nashbandi shaykhs that he had a specialty in the month of Safar <coughs> to deflect any type of difficulty. Recite Surat al-Fatiha for him every day, give out water, food in his name, get his madad and support and nazar upon yourselves inshaAllah. So, so many, so many ways in tariqah to keep an umbrella of protection and a shield of good deeds. The good deeds are what deflect away any type of negativity and harm inshaAllah. It's a month of majestic haybah and dress inshaAllah. Mm. Uh, as salaamu alaykum shaykh Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah How do I deal with a one who talks negative 24-7 or uses abuses for everyone and if I stop him takes it in a wrong way and how to have good health if often fall sick? <clears throat> Anybody that you're around that always talking negative, then you're around a very negative person, try to remain silent. That if they talk negative then everyone has their own grave. So there's not much you can do, it sounds like that would be a spouse or you know one household and a member within the house, you, you always want to keep peace within your household. So then the advice was to be silent. And take a path of silence. Fawudu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi libad. For verily, Ya Rabbi, you see my condition. And Allah put you in that condition, so there must be a test of that condition. There is a door out, but that you have to wait for Allah to, to show that door of uh, how that's going to be relieved. But the testing would immediately be that just be silent, do your zikr, do your practices. Somebody can talk all the negativity they want but you know they ha they're to their own, they have their own grave. I don't have to participate in it and if I'm stuck listening to it, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm and do my own thing until the person finds that that's not a discussion that's very interesting and it may, it may begin to stop and other things can be talked about. But just to mention that they talk bad and that you, you didn't mention that you must be talking bad with them back and having discussions and, and so it takes two to tango and to have a conversation. If one remains silent and begin to remain silent then you'll find the person talking is talking less because there's nobody replying and, and saying, uh-huh, uh-huh and, and agreeing and so inshaAllah it lessens in, to some degree. And some people by their nature are very negative because they're angry to the world and angry to everything around them. And again it's a way of silence and, and self-reflection and going within the heart and, and, and having good character while doing all of that. So that's why it's a, a great jihad, it's a great struggle to struggle against oneself and to keep good characters, not, not something easy at all. So it's continuous failure, continuous uh, did it wrong and tomorrow inshaAllah will be a better day and we'll try again tomorrow. But if it was easy Prophet would not be telling his companions who are immense warriors, immense warriors and telling him that we have now the biggest battle that we're going to face and that's the battle within. When I'm not physically amongst you, you're going to be battling intense battles with the battle within the servant. So that, that's a, a big warning from Prophet that that's not something that people can pass without Divine support inshaAllah. SubhanAllah rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifu wa salaam al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, very good questions. Thank everybody for the questions and mashaAllah. Inshallah, everybody go to the app and prepare themselves for the month of Safa, the awrad and the 
month of Safar, the etiquette of what to recite under the general settings and you print those out and do the daily recitations and welcoming the holy month inshaAllah Sunday, Monday depending upon where we are. And that Allah dress us and bless us of the servants to enter into that cave of Divine Love and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. With that niyat inshaAllah, the niyat of Khatma Khawjikan inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.